This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Silvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is April 18, 2024. Jonathan Osborne here, back uh, in the the co-host chair here. Luke Sylvia, Luke, how was the cruise with my wife and and your wife? <laughs> uh, yes. To clarify once again, it is a it was a cruise that our wives, uh, the company they work for, were very generous and got us all cruises. Jonathan had the the chance, but he is just simply built different. I heard free everything including food and i went on the cruise and i will say i listened obviously to the episode that you and kevin put out while i was away and you talked about it it was i understand i got i got what you were saying you said in that moment joe ingles hits that three we go up uh basically seal the game at that point and you're like this is why i stayed home i on the other hand was in a pool chair with a pina colada in my hand and i was fist pumping and i i was so happy i went on the cruise cruise. (laughs) this is why i came on the cruise so perspective is everything folks and um jonathan and i both were happy with our respective decisions but uh, i'm glad kevin held it down as always and i just i number one shout out to royal caribbean because i was on the island at one point the beginning of the game their private island thing or whatever and had just picture perfect quality on my on my bally stream which i did not expect so got to experience in that my wife and i went over to the went to the top of the boat for the second half and uh and hung out by the pool and the, the hot tubs and all that kind of stuff so it was awesome it was great it was it was i just yeah shout out to royal caribbean because that streaming was way better than i thought it was gonna be we we went and used uh, you paid for the package for that, and it was uh, well well worth the money. And uh, just awesome to see our guys get it done, as you and Kev have already recapped. But uh, a lot of emotions there. Yeah, we're gonna go through Luke's emotions and, and sort of his reaction to the game, and talk, you know, get his thoughts about the uh, the upcoming playoff series. Obviously, we also have a conversation with our guy Terrence Ross coming up later in the show, uh, getting his thoughts you know, on retired life and how he's been doing, but also get his thoughts on this magic team and, and how he sees this series playing out. Before we get into that, though, I just want to go over a couple of things. So now we are officially entering into playoff mode. So this will be like our last sort of normal show until the playoff run is over. We are no longer going to be releasing Monday and Thursday shows you know, necessarily the way that they're scheduled. We're just going to be recording after every playoff game. So that may come on a Monday. It may come on a Thursday. But like our next episode, we're going to have a playoff preview episode that's coming out Friday that I did with Bob Schmidt from Fear the Fro. It's a Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. He released the first kind of part of that um, today. So if you want to go to his feed and, and check out our conversation where he asks me a lot about the Orlando Magic, the episode that we are releasing on Friday is mostly me asking Bob about the Cleveland Cavaliers and how he sees the series going. So that's going to come out Friday. And then after the game on Saturday, like Saturday night or early Sunday morning, as soon as we can record and get an episode up, we're going to have an episode up. Kevin's going to be doing the post game live after every single magic uh, playoff game as well. And then we'll just be doing, that'll sort of be our rhythm, you know, a post game live and six man show after every game. Some of those might be like a post game live six man show, like together when, you know, hopefully we'll all be together, you know, for game three, game four, game six. Everybody's in town. We'll, we'll try to, you know, two birds, one stone kind of deal there. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to update you all on the recording schedule throughout the postseason here. And then once we get into the off season, we'll go back to our regularly scheduled, you know, Monday, Thursday kind of vibes there. Watch parties want to give you all some updates just about the festivities of the playoff season here. Our first watch party for the playoffs is going to be this Saturday at Wall Street Plaza. The Magic are also hosting satellite watch parties all over the city. So if you don't want all the craziness of Wall Street Plaza, because it is going to be crazy, 
uh, a thousand plus, hopefully like two thousand plus Magic fans down there. If you don't want to be involved in all that craziness or you can't make it all the way out to Wall Street Plaza, there's going to be, again, satellite watch parties all over the city, uh, really at the different venues that we had watch parties at during the regular season. So one is going to be at Elixir, which is 9 West Washington Street in downtown Orlando. Another at Hagen O'Reilly's, which is 16112 Marsh Road in Winter Garden. Another at Tavern East Orlando, which is 504 North Alafaya Trail, Suite 102. And then lastly, at the Twisted Handle, which is located at 1632 North Mills Avenue. That's going to be every away Magic game in the playoffs here. And then we will also, again, be at Wall Street Plaza for every uh, Magic away game. If there's any changes or any updates, obviously you can find us on social media at Six Man Show. We'll be providing updates there if anything changes. Uh, And also the best way to get your news is going to be listening to the show. And then for home games... Obviously, a lot of us are going to be at some of those home games. But let's say you're just in the area, you you weren't able to get tickets or whatever the case may be. The Magic are also going to be doing a fan fest outside of Kia Center on Church Street during the game. So if you're not inside for the games, uh, you're able to take part in all the festivities that are going to be happening outside on Church Street. They're going to have like a a massive stage and and screen, a big screen out there. Uh, So be sure, like if you're not going to be at those games, you can still be on Church Street with tons of other Magic fans, you know, rooting and, and, and cheering them on. So, Luke, a lot of stuff going on. We're really, really excited about the the playoffs and all the watch parties here. Uh, it's it's a lot, and it is a, a blessing to be able to kind of be the you know able to tell people about this and be able to put our name anywhere near events like this. the The event is is going to be huge whether that be at Wall Street or anywhere else in the surrounding Orlando area. So shout out to the Magic, Michelob Ultra, making uh, our dreams come true with this. And then to say that, you know, this this could be a series that the Magic could end up winning or we'll, we know we'll make some good memories during this series. And for you to be able to say, I got to experience that with a ton, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other Magic fans. Uh, it's it's super cool. So so don't miss out if you're able to be there. And you can RSVP for any one of these watch parties at events.orlandomagic.com slash Orlando Magic Playoff Watch Party. Just to give the Magic an idea of how many people are coming to each venue. It is not required. You don't have to RSVP to be able to get in. And we have had questions. Each one of these watch parties is going to be all ages. So they're going to be family friendly. If you want to bring your kids, you know, there's going to be a lot of people it's going to be pretty noisy. But if you do want to be able to, to, to bring your family, you will be able to do that at each of the locations for the watch parties here. And then the Six Fan Show, the next episode of the Six Fan Show will be filmed at Wall Street Plaza following Game 1. So hopefully we're all uh, celebrating a big Game 1 victory over the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, and then, yeah, as we schedule the rest of those throughout the playoffs here, uh, again, this is going to be the best place to, to find all that type of information. Now, Luke. Kevin and I, you know, we were able to record, you know, shortly after that that victory Sunday. But um, I just want to you know, talk to you a little bit and get your thoughts. Like, what were your emotions leading into that game? Obviously, you're in a, a great mood. You're you're on a you know tropical private mm-hmm. island. You know, mm-hmm. shout out to to Scooby Doo. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you had a pina colada in your hand. Life can't be much better than that. But what were your emotions leading up to this game? And then just talk about your experience watching that game unfold on Sunday. The last, I believe it was the last episode that that I was on, whatever that was, last Thursday's episode. I had essentially said I was feeling pretty apathetic towards the team at the time. And I said, I know come Friday against Philly, I will get up for that game and I will lose the apathy but the team had just been playing so poorly. I was just under the impression we're going to end up, you know, we're going to end up losing. We're going to find ourselves in the play in and you get caught in the moment. Friday game against Philly happens. And I'll be honest, like I didn't have a lot of confidence going into Sunday. I, I'm not the type that can kind of throw reality out the window entirely. I can't just say like, Oh, I just, I just know our team is going to pull it off because I didn't. 
and I didn't feel that way at all. I tend to swing the other way when it comes to Can odds, are, odds are stacked against you. It doesn't feel that way that, that you have a great chance. And then at the beginning, so I, but, but I, again, I still care about the game in the moment, obviously leading up to it. I, I do have nerves about the game because I'm like, man, I don't want to go to the play. And every, every emotion, every magic fan was feeling in that moment. I, I felt as well. Now, in the second quarter of this game, you obviously you get outscored in the first quarter. You're thinking, okay, you're down, but it, it's it's not impossible. But I will tell you, Bobby Portis hits that three to make it an 11 point game in the second quarter with seven minutes left. And I'm watching this game on my phone, and I just put the phone down for a second. I was like, I can't, I can't handle this right now. The team we're unraveling. This is it. We're going to the play in. And then the magic decide to to make me proud. And Jonathan they start Isaac to, decides. Yeah, exactly. Jonathan Isaac decides, don't worry, Luke. I'm not going to ruin your beach vacation. I'm going to make it worth it. And the takeover begins. And then you see the magic are climbing back into this game. And then to end the first half up by five, after Bobby Portis and the emotions I had when he hit that three to put the Bucks up 11, I could not believe it. I couldn't believe it. And then you're sitting in a spot where you're like, this game is ours. It's ours to lose. You're up by five. Jonathan Isaac is here. Up to that point, you've gotten, you know, in that second quarter on that run, you had, you had, uh, you obviously players having great, great halves to that point. And then you're just thinking and hoping that the shoe doesn't drop in the second half. And then <laughs> just, then all of a sudden you look up and, and the magic score 33 in the third, 33 in the fourth. And in that fourth quarter, you hold Milwaukee to 17 after holding them to 12 in the second. I Genuine disbelief watching all this happen. Jonathan Isaac playing the most ridiculous game that I can remember. It might be recency bias, but I think that it was. <laughs> like, I think it's the best game that he's like, not offensively, but like right. defensively, that's as good as he's ever been. And then to pair that with to pair that defensive experience, which was just euphoria with Jonathan Isaac watching him play defense, you pair that with 51 combined from your number one and number two and Paolo and Franz. And it's like, uh, elation, obviously, like, could not believe it. And that really is all that I can say about it, truly, as far as emotions go. I Just the relief that's lifted, the magic go up by, like, what, 30? And you're like, wow, this game's actually over. The magic are going to the playoffs. <laughs> just, you, you couldn't help but get emotional watching it. Because it's like, this is different. This is even different than, and we've talked about this before, but this is different than that Boston game when you clinch in 18-19. It's different because this is the floor, not the ceiling. And it's like, your Orlando Magic have won 47 basketball games. Not combined through two seasons, three seasons. In one season. The Magic went 47 and 35. I, just crazy. Crazy. And could not be prouder of, uh, of this team. I, I hate them for making me go to the final game with it. But in that moment, it was like, this is why I love this team. Because they always like to make it interesting. But a lot of times, and what they've done, more likely than not, they're going to find a way. They found a way, and we're playing the Cleveland Cavaliers in a 4-5 matchup. <laughs> it's ridiculous to say. It's crazy. Like to, to say that, I've said it, I've thought it a million times, we've talked about it, we've texted about it, but to just like say it on the podcast that the Magic are the fifth seed, they're playing the fourth seed. Not a place I thought we would find ourselves. I pretty... 
our final episode before the season, I said six seed. I predicted that, but at the same time, I could not foresee the emotional roller coaster this season was going to be and the emotions to conclude the season when your team clinches the playoffs. There's nothing like that moment aside from obviously winning a playoff round. I could not be prouder of this team. Now, what were your thoughts on the way that Cleveland handled the the final day of the season, seemingly, you know, throwing that game against Charlotte because they wanted the magic in the four five uh, matchup? Screw them, <laughs> screw them, screw the Cleveland Cavaliers. But that's from that moment, you saw it happen, and I just was, I was hoping, like you know, obviously, uh, at that moment when you get that report, you're like, oh, I just. I hope they end up winning anyway. I hope they end up winning that game just because they don't they don't deserve like you're trying to to manufacture the game to get the seating you want and it just I get it. Don't get me wrong. I get it, but still it, it screw them. Facts. And that's what it's going to be for the next for the, this whole series, the next 2 weeks whatever it will be. And you heard JB Bickerstaff in his press conference talk about him and Mosley how they're such great friends. They even had plans together and did stuff for the all-star break, but they decided whatever, whenever it was, he said Sunday or Monday, this past Sunday or Monday, we're done. We're done with communication until it's over. I'm like, uh, that's great. That's great. Cause right now I hate you guys. And you guys thought that it was sweet. I, I as a magic fan, now my prediction, phew, it's going to rub people the wrong way, but, I, I, it's everybody knows this. I, I do a freaking Orlando Magic podcast. I hope that the Orlando Magic can take it to the Cleveland Cavaliers, and uh, and and Jamal Mosley forever has bragging rights over JB Bickerstaff. So let's get into the the prediction because I I've heard it and people are are definitely not going to oh, be happy, but they're gonna you, know, you have it. to you have to be honest with the way I, that I you have feel. To but... Be honest, and and let's. <laughs> I also thought about it this way too. I'm like, if I see any other magic fan say this i'm like oh forget you what are you talking about but i i like i said i tend to go to the negative when it comes to this team but i do think it's to protect my heart but at the same time there's a little bit of realistic it's not like i'm just saying this to say it it's not like i'm saying it because i'm like oh our team doesn't have a chance i'm not saying that at all i think they have a chance I think a lot has to go right and i'll explain why but ultimately my prediction is cleveland cavaliers in five my sole reasoning for this is the offense if you're shooting low volume low percentage from three and multiple games which this team has showed us is possible cleveland's great at defending the paint they are going to cause problems there Whistle isn't blown quite as much. You're a great free throw shooting team. And all of a sudden, you're not getting calls. Your team's getting frustrated. You're not able to get to the to the rim. And Cleveland's going to say, all right, hit your shots. And if you are not hitting your shots, I, it's over. And unfortunately, for this team... I said earlier, being young in the regular season is really was the caveat. People might have not heard that part, but being saying you're young, this team is young during the regular season is not an excuse to lose games because this team has proven that they can win games in the regular season against the Denver Nuggets, against all these teams. They can hang tight against the top teams in the league. Every game against the top team is a 50-50 in the regular season with this team. Being young was not an excuse there. Couldn't be. I think it is going to be absolutely valid in this series. Yes, Cleveland is young. But they've got some guys. We've got some guys, but they've got some some guys. Some really great talent that can take over a series. Donovan Mitchell being number one that I'm thinking of, obviously. Darius Garland is awesome. Jared Allen is awesome. Evan Mobley, right? I think in this series, if they are packing the paint, which they will, there's no way they don't. 
and they're daring you to shoot, this young magic team could get frustrated, could get their mentals out of whack and start to miss shots. And then it just is a snowball effect. And next thing you know, you're shooting 20% from three and you're forcing shots. That's what I'm afraid of. That you're just going to force it. You're going to say, fine, you guys, you're, you're disrespecting us. You're going to try to make a shoot. We're just going to go ahead and abandon the game plan to still try to get to the paint. We're just going to shoot. Next thing you know, you look up, the Magic have shot 40, 43s at, on, and 20% from, from three or worse. That is what I'm terrified of. And ultimately, I do think it's that simple. And it easily could come down to that in the series. Yeah, the Cavs, like, they're not necessarily a great three point shooting team, but the volume that they shoot them at, they are, I think, seventh in the, the league in, in three pointers made this year. So, when if everything's equal and they're just getting those attempts up more and, and, and making more of them, at some point you just sort of get, you know, outmathed in that situation if the Magic aren't knocking down shots. Now, I've already talked about, I've got the Magic in seven. That's the eternal optimist in me, you know, wanting to see this series go the distance and wanting to believe that the Magic can can pull it out. You and I have talked about this over the course of the last several weeks, but Indiana and Cleveland were really the most favorable matchups that you could ask for really in this situation. And the Magic got the Cavs. I would probably feel a little bit better if we were playing Indiana, but I do think that Cleveland is still a pretty good draw for the Magic. But you're 100 percent right. If this series goes five, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be shocked. If it goes five in the Magic's favor, <laughs> I'll be pretty surprised. The other way, I will not be shocked. But it totally is going to come down to the Magic's shooting. The one thing that in the back of my mind is just like if we do start Jonathan Isaac at center. Mm -hmm. And this team is able to just lock up Cleveland and get out to better starts and get them feeling confident early on. And, and they don't go down, you know, 18 to six in the first quarter because they're just not able to make enough shots. If they're down 11 to six instead of 18 to six because of the defense and they can hang in a long enough, hang in long enough and get that confidence and knock down a couple of shots. That's when the series has the opportunity to turn because if you look up and down the roster, like the guys that are going to get minutes, we've got guys that can knock down shots. Paolo and Franz are going to be the big wild card, right? But Jalen, Gary's got to come out of his shooting slump. We don't have a chance if Gary doesn't come out of his shooting slump. J.I. has been knocking down shots all year long. Wendell has been knocking down shots. Joe Ingles as well. You're going to need a you know, couple of really good games from Cole and Mo Wagner. Those guys are have the opportunity to flip a game by themselves. Ultimately, yes, this series is going to come down to if the Magic can hit their shots. Like if I told you, Luke, the Magic shot 35% for the series. How do you think the series goes? Yeah, you, you shoot 35% from three. If you're telling me it's like relatively low volume, I say the Magic kept it respectable. I'd say, you know, the Magic could at that point win in six or seven. Or the Cavs could win in six or seven. I don't see a gentleman sweep happening at that point, which is what I would really love to avoid. I think obviously at that point you get a it's a much better result because other than the alternative that I already talked about percentage wise. Now the sort of silver lining of all of this, and I'm not coming here to say like, oh, if we get swept, it's totally cool. Like I, I won't care about that. In the moment, I absolutely will. But again, we need to go into this playoff series with like tunnel vision, but also like be able to step back and see the big picture with everything. And the silver lining to this series, if you lose in four, or you lose in five, or you lose in six, and, and maybe you got a little bit lucky in two of those games. And even though you lost in six, you don't come away from this series feeling great. The silver lining to that will be that the Cavs have exposed most of your flaws to the nth degree so that like, yes, we know what sort of plagued us during the regular season, but when everything gets real in the playoffs and you really know who you have and who you don't, it will show this front office exactly what we need. And Jeff Weltman was on open mic with Mike Bianchi earlier this week. And Mike Bianchi was just you know, sort of talking about how this team is, you know, exceeded expectations. And there was a, a listener question at the end of like how you're going to approach free agency. 
I came away from that like very, very confident in Jeff Weltman that he like, hey, yes, we've overachieved even to our standard and what we expected going into this season, but we're still not a perfect team. He went on to say a lot of things. And at the end, he said, well, let me just say I'm also okay with sort of just doubling down on our roster. That was just sort of like the footnote at the very end. And what is he supposed to say? Like, oh, yeah, we're going into the playoffs, but I don't believe in half of these guys and they're going to be gone next year. Of course, he cannot say that. But I, I do feel very confident that regardless of this playoff series, Jeff Weltman isn't going to do like an Atlanta Hawks reaching the Eastern Conference Finals a couple of years ago and just sort of go all in on this team that we have. And then a couple of years from now, you realize like, oh, hey, like we didn't actually have what we thought we have. So regardless of how this all plays out, I'm very confident that the Magic are going to be even better next year. Absolutely. The other thing I want to warn people of, Paolo Bancaro is going to have a couple stinkers. And there's just no way around it. He, there, there is going to be probably be a game where he shoots like eight of twenty-two from the field, and you have to already, you have to pre-decide. I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to say Paolo's not that guy. Blah 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 blah. Because on the playoff stage, everyone is watching, whether they're watching the NBA TV games or not. They will be box score watching, and that is the worst. And I know I'm going to have friends of mine trying to get under my skin if Paolo has a really bad game. Paolo's going on tour. Yeah, exactly. Paolo shoots 8 of 22. He's gone on tour August 22nd. It, it's going, it, I'm expecting it. And, um, and if it doesn't happen, I'll be pleasantly surprised. But we've seen it, right? Like teams just load up on Paolo. And, and don't get me wrong. He sh- could shoot 8 of, eight of 22 and still have nine assists, eight assists, whatever it might be. But you just can't overreact. Whether that's Palo or Franz, you can't overreact. Again, this is the this is the time, this is the stage where I I will accept that this team is young. And it can be used as an excuse. Now going into next season, this will be different. They will have had a, a round of playoff experience if they lose, right? Regardless, you lose if you get swept, if you lose in five, whatever the case, you still will have have that have had that experience. Next postseason, that's not something that I'm going to tell you to just brush off. That's going to be something. Then okay, we need to see what's going on. Is it the roster construction still? Whatever it might be, because Paolo's learning. What's a good shot? What's not? He's still learning that. And he's learning that because coverages are becoming increasingly more difficult. His teams are respecting him more. He's getting put on freaking all NBA third team ballots, right? Like for voting. He's going, he is getting the respect. So that's, that's my caveat. That's my long winded caveat for Magic fans. Don't, don't give up on these guys because of this playoff series. They don't deserve that. And they shouldn't. Like, you didn't think they'd be here in the fifth seed. Let them do their thing. Let them, hopefully, they play loose. And playing loose might look like shooting a really ugly percentage, sub 40% from the series or something like that. These guys are young. Some people thought the last couple of weeks, as you're like sliding at the end of the season, that they were already at the point where we were playing with house money. This is the point where I'm okay with saying, like, okay, you're, you're playing with house money. And to Luke's point, that's exactly what Cleveland is going to do. They're going to pack the paint. They're going to collapse on Paolo. They're going to try to make everybody else beat you until they start to. And then Paolo will have a little bit more room to operate. But that's why it's so important that the the Magic get off to good starts and that guys knock down shots to give Paolo that breathing room. Paolo's incredible. He's not really at the point where he's going to just go out and drop 35 points a game in a playoff series without any help yet. Like he, he's... He's going to get there. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but he's not quite there yet. It's going to take another couple of seasons of him seeing different looks and 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 just continuing to learn the game and and what it's going to take to win uh, in the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, Luke, great point. Glad that you brought that up. Let's go ahead and take a quick break before we get into the interview with Terrence Ross. I want to give a very special shout out 
to our patrons, the folks that have been supporting us all year long, helping make each and every episode possible. Um, if you're new to the show, welcome. We, we hope that this will be your uh, podcast home for the playoffs here as the, the Magic make their, their run, hopefully, through the first uh, you know few rounds, maybe even to an NBA championship this year. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, like Dubai is underwater right now. That's pretty crazy. Why can't the Magic win an NBA championship? <laughs> Who knows? Um, but we give a very special shout out to brand new patrons whenever we have them. So a big shout out to Bueno Times, who joined not only at the elite tier level, but he said, you know what? I'm going to take advantage of the discount that I get for paying for the entire year up front. And he went ahead and paid for the entire year up front. So a big shout out to Bueno Times. You can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show if you would like to support the show as well. In addition to our brand new patrons, we give our elite and Hall of Fame tier patrons a special shout out each and every episode. Let's go ahead and give a shout out to Court Cousins, Drew Gooden, Armin, Carson Tulo, Ellis, Jonathan Borges, Normal Magic Player History, Gabe Gaines, Wiffle, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, Donkey Punch, Dave, Paolo and Francis Warmth, Pierre A. Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Danimo, Bobby, Bobby Skinner, Godie93, Teddy, Sylvia, Eric Lopez, Fuchsia, Bill Fulton, Edmund Lagone, Jose Esquilin, Kayla Pete, Cannibalism, Ty, Mr. TV, ESPN, Really Sucks, Gear 95, Shred, Junior Bruce, Half Recon, Chahan 177, Bobby the Don, Himlo Ben Himro, R Improv 221, Ray Pastrana, Magic Kid 714, Mysterious Mosley, Victor Cologne, Irish Magic Mike, Austin Lampy, Random Hustle, Only Franz, Maria, Keith Walls, Fritz, Currency Kev, Brub Sal, Case and Green, Santi Leon, Kane Neckler, The Distract, Ahmad Simpson, Chansu, Tom Gatson, Dead Air, Richard Tuttle, Jeremiah Quintero, Magic Wired, Debo 1980, Magic Matt, Michael Thompson, Mama Richmond, Next Snappa, What's Up Playoffs 2024, Dylan Fay, Sammy Duffy, David Duffy, Smith's Sheik's Ship Sinks. <laughs> Can't believe I keep saying that. And Bueno Times, a big shout out to all of our patrons. You can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the six man show. Jonathan, you know what I'm I'm pumped about come come playoff time here when when we are heading to the O. I cannot wait for Jam Hot Chicken. I'm going to make sure that I'm able to get there, especially whether if it's a weekend game, whatever it might be, and I'm I'm you know coming there after work, I'm going to try to do my best effort to get to Jam Hot Chicken. I'm going to go to 400 West New England Avenue, Suite 13 in Hannibal Square there in beautiful Winter Park. Great outside seating, um, really cool environment, and awesome, awesome uh, employees that that and staff there that we are proudly partnered with. You guys can go to jamhotchickenfl.com, check out the access the online ordering, music playlists, all that sort of thing. And you can go to at jamhotchicken on all social media, throw them a follow, go check them out in Winter Park at that address. And Jonathan, Jam Hot Chicken rolled out something pretty awesome the other day. They are now collabing with uh fat ash bakes on instagram uh, that's an h on the end just so everybody is aware. yes it is and it's <laughs> ph not f-a-t um they have partnered with them they do it looks like like some gourmet cookie action just like just just these thick cookies that need to be eaten and they are now looks like they are now available at jam hot chicken there in winter park so go Go check out Jam Hot Chicken and get yourself a cookie or 10 because these cookies look awesome. I went to that handle to the, I'll say it again, Fat Ash Bakes, P-H-A-T-A-S-H Bakes on Instagram. And those cookies look awesome. They have videos where they're like pulling the cookie apart and it's just like gooey on the end. Just incredible. I, I would heavily recommend going to Jam Hot Chicken and getting yourself one of those cookies. Speaking of Jam Hot, we have a Jam Hot guest uh, in our next segment here. Let's get into our interview with Terrence, the Human Torch, Ross. Magic fans, we are now joined by a very special guest. We like to think, you know, friend of the podcast. He is sixth all-time in three-point field goals made for the Orlando Magic. None other than Magic legend Terrence, the Human Torch, Ross. Terrence, welcome back to the show, man. How are you, man? It's good to see you. Thank you guys, man. No, it's been great. Uh, I'm doing well, uh, having fun in the retired life and hanging out, you know, doing all types of different things. So it's been great. 
yeah what this is your uh your first year you know mm -hmm. as a as a free man <laughs> yeah, i guess yeah, after yeah, your retirement real. what what's that been like you know what have you been up to and uh how how are you how's your family uh yeah uh, my first year with the uh, pretty much nothing much not really anything going on uh no schedule so it's been cool i've been traveling a lot uh doing a lot of things during the season that i never really got to do so uh, i've been doing a little bit of that reconnecting with old friends from around the country so uh man i'm just having a good time just just running around kind of just being on my own time doing what i want Re really quickly something just came to mind I, yeah. I recently got into golf weren't you just at the masters yeah yeah i just what got was back. that like it was it was crazy actually um i mean i'm not really a, a huge golf fan uh I, I don't really keep up with it but i had the opportunity to to go and everybody was just like yeah you don't want to miss this this is like the best thing you'll ever see like it's super exclusive it's can't really buy tickets so uh it was definitely an experience uh i went with me and my wife and we had the chance to go up there and just kind of get the lay of the land but it was absolutely wild like just seeing because i never really i didn't know what to expect i've been to i haven't really been to any golf tournaments uh besides like the ones out here that you see like the arnold palmer but this was like this is like the Grammys of like golf, man. Like it was unreal seeing how many people showed up and just like the environment. So definitely a, a bucket list I could scratch off, but it was, it was a great time. Terrence, it's no secret to magic fans if they've kept up at all, but you're, you're always posting at magic games and obviously you've hung around Orlando. You've, mm -hmm. you've played for a few teams in your NBA career. And in that, when you retire, what goes into Hey, here's where I want to spend the foreseeable future after I'm I'm done. Um, I mean, for me, it worked out in a way that just made sense. Uh, when I was playing in Toronto, I was I was young. I I had just had my son. Uh, right towards the end of my tenure with the with the Raptors, so it was a lot different from you know being in like a city city where I'm just kind of it's just me I had to worry about to. Once I got here, I kind of realized, like, all right, Orlando is, like, the perfect place to start a family and kind of, you know, just be after your career. And I kind of got that as soon as I, I touched back in pretty much the States for my first time in, like, five years. So uh, it, it was – it just made sense, man. Like, I ended up buying a place, you know, close to Disney. And, I mean, growing up, like, I just remember everybody wanted to go to Disney. It's, it's like the ideal vacation spot. Um, it's always sunny. It's – I mean, it's great weather besides the hurricanes. Uh, but for the most part, it just made sense, man. And also having just like a ton of other retired athletes around here just kind of made it feel like home in a sense. Like I didn't feel like I was kind of out of my element. I see guys all the time around town who I'm familiar with. So and then on top of that, just having my family here and them creating their own life. Like my friend, my son has a bunch of friends. My daughter has a bunch of friends. My wife has, you know, made her friends here. So we kind of just set our roots so deep that it just it made perfect sense to stay here. I love that. Darren, speaking of, of people that you're familiar with, you're very familiar with this Magic team. You know, you, you, you yeah. still know a lot of these guys on the team. You're really close with a lot of the guys. But this year you were you were sort of on the other side, you know, on mm -hmm. the on the fan side of things. You know, you went to, you know, a, a decent amount of games. What is that experience been like, like running into Magic fans yeah. at games, but like, what has that been like for you being a, a spectator this year? It's been fun, man. Uh, it's not nearly as stressful uh, going into the arena now and getting ready for a game where you're trying to have to match up against Paul George or LeBron or KD or anybody like that. So uh, it, it was fun just to see the, the other side of things and just kind of enjoying myself and going out there and just kind of watching the game from a from a fan spectator point. Like, it's been great. Like, of course, the the fans, it's always fun seeing them, interacting with them. But at the same time, like, I still love the game of basketball. I still love watching it. And just knowing that, like, my family still loves, like, going to the games and loving the atmosphere. And on top of everything, the Magic has just been amazing this year. So it's just hard not to go to the games. But I've been having fun, man, having a couple of drinks here, catching up with, you know, former players, walking around, strolling around. Like, they pretty much let me just roam wherever, pretty much. They're just like, oh, hey, you want to come back here? Can I park in the players' garage or can I go over here? And so it's just coming back feels like just coming back to, like, an old high school and just seeing all your old friends. And it's a great feeling. And to know that I'm still welcome and that they still have love for me is the best feeling. Obviously, Terrence, you, you've, you've spent a lot of time around this team. And coming into this season, 
and then seeing where what they have done, what they accomplished, being the fifth seed in the East, it feels surreal to Magic fans. Does that feel surreal at all to you to see like the guys that you were just playing with uh, recently achieve this so quickly? No, I man. I, actually, I feel like I've been on this podcast before saying like, yo, give it a year or two or give it some time. We're just getting the pieces together. And I kind of saw this, um, especially when, like for me, like playing with like J.I. and and Truman and like Wendell and all those guys, like I understood where their game was at and how it was progressing. But then once we drafted like Franz and seeing him take that just major leap from college to the pros and seeing how his game translated, like you understood that they had really good pieces. And on top of all of that, they get Paolo. And I mean, I was fortunate enough to be there you know, for the start of his career and get to see it up close. Like you kind of get to see like a glimpse into the future almost. So I'm just seeing like the potential of this team and, and thanks to like Jalen and Cole, like Jalen took a huge step this year. And I feel like he's the X factor that really put this team over the top, not just with his offense, but like his defense has been tremendous. And I can see that from such a far, it's just Watching him play, he was trying to understand how to figure out where he could be aggressive, where he could speed things up, where he can be physical. And you just knew once he he found that once he flipped that switch and kind of understood what it took, you know, the sky's the limit for him. And you can kind of see everything coming together at the right time. But I mean, early, early on, like my last few days, I mean, I, I just understood like having Mo's there, what the plan was for the long term. And I I feel like they took that step in a great way this season. And I think everybody's seeing it for the first time. There's really so many storylines that you could talk about, like within this mm-hmm. team, what has been sort of like the thread that has impressed you the most this year with the team? Um, Honestly, J.I. J.I., I mean, I don't, I don't think he gets enough credit, Um, especially just his whole journey. It's to see him like lead the defense and, and being a, a huge X factor on that. And, and then also seeing just like his offensive side, like now he's able to shoot it, finish it, dunk around the basket, like all those things we saw glimpses of in the past. But I just knew like, you know, once he gets healthy and he's on the court, like he can be defensive player of the year. He just has to get those games in and get the feel. And then I just feel like every time I see him on the court, man, he just looks good. He looks bigger, stronger, more confident. He's out there just knowing – when the game's coming to him and how to get to his spots. And it's it's amazing to see and just all the young guys I was with, seeing them grow up and seeing them just come together and understanding what it takes to win in the league now. Like it's, it's phenomenal. I just hope they can keep this team together and just build something special here because they have what it takes. You went from, from being the oldest on the team Mm -hmm. to now it's a a guy you didn't play with in your time in Orlando, Joe Ingles. (laughs) <laughs> He's brought such an incredible part to the team, like whether it's his trash talk or how he is in the pick and roll, him and Mo Wagner in the pick and roll. A lot of impressive things about him. Have you had a chance to talk with Joe Ingles at all about the, the team and connect with him at all? And regardless, what what have you seen from Joe and, and what can he be for this team in the playoffs? Honestly, I haven't I haven't got that's like the one the the few people I haven't gotten to speak with yet, but I mean, Joe's been around for a long time, and he's been a part of really good teams, like the team in Utah where he had to stretch with him and Donovan and and, and uh, Gobert. Like, that was a good team who understood what it took to win, especially in the West during a, t- during a time where, you know, the Warriors were dominant, the, the, war- or the Rockets were really good. Like, he brings a level of professionalism and just – his knowledge and his leadership is probably what's going to have the biggest impact on this game. Um, he, he's been in a lot of really hard situations and like playoff experience that I think is going to be valuable coming up shortly. Um, Cause I mean, most of these guys, they, you can play a team four times a year in your same division, but like playing in the playoffs is a completely different feel. Like game one is not going to feel like game four and game four is going to feel completely different from game seven. So I just think that with that level of knowledge that he has, I think he could help calm them when they start to get a little sporadic and a little out of whack. But uh, Joe's going to be a big part of just what they do in the clutch moments and just having the the knowledge to keep them steady. You you talk about uh, – sorry, Jonathan, but real quick here, Terrence. You talk about playoff experience and what that brings to the table – 
we hear that all the time. We we hear teams say they wanted Orlando, and we obviously know it's because of lack of 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 playoff experience. What does what does playoff experience really bring? Because I feel like people bring it up and they just stop there. They don't talk about why it's important yeah. and what you expect versus someone that's in it for the first time. Um, I think when people say that, the biggest thing is just understanding like the emotional factor of, of playing that much against the same opponent. Like they start to learn everything you do really quick. And that could be very frustrating for a lot of people. Um and then when you get frustrated, you get out of character. And that's that's the playoff mentality. Like, you, how focused can you be on what it is your team needs to do to win compared to, all right, staying calm and, and getting out of whack? Like, you don't want to be all over the place because you want to be steady because two games can feel – can change the entire series. So uh, it's it's just the level of steadiness that you need to have because I, I remember my first time going to the playoffs. It was you could f- it feels like a completely different game. It feels like every bucket is like the game winning bucket, but it's a completely long series that you have to go step by step. Every possession matters, and it requires a, a really high level of focus to to go out there and perform that you don't really feel all like in game forty two. So. Um, yeah, that that playoff atmosphere is really heavy, and it it could be a lot emotionally. Terrence, you sort of went through a, a similar journey as a lot of the guys on this roster. Like, you know, you were traded to Orlando. Team wasn't that good, at least at first, but you guys were able to, you know, find a way to win in that 2018-2019 series. You guys go on that 22-9 and nine run to end the season, you know, end up playing the Raptors in the first round. What do you remember, like, the shift in energy around the city, like, as you guys made that playoff run? And, and what do you remember from that first game in Orlando, like, game three in 2019? No, nah, yeah, 2018, 2019 is probably my favorite season, you know, in my career. Um, I remember so much from it. But I, I remember there was a point, I think we were in Utah and we had just lost, and we were kind of feeling like our back was against the wall and that this season was – it was going to be over quick if we didn't do something. So that that feeling just your back against the wall gives you almost like a confidence of just like, all right, I'm going to go out swinging and like I'm going to go out and give everything I have. And we we did that and we start to catch a groove. And that's what this time of year is all about. Like guys can be up and down during the season, but what you're trying to find is just the perfect groove going into the postseason. And that's what we did. Um, and you can start to feel that towards – the last five games of the year where we're looking at not just our schedule, but everybody else to make sure that like, all right, this is what we need to do and make sure. And if we win, if we win tonight, we're, we're securing it. But if, we're, if we lose, we're making sure that we, somebody else that we need to lose, loses as well. Um, but you could definitely feel, I, I think around we play, it was like two games ago. And I think the second to last game was in Boston on the road. And that game was huge. Um, and it felt like that from the time we got to Boston. Like, we knew this was the make or break. We didn't want to leave it to going to Charlotte trying to win on the road as our last game. And um, we played phenomenal. Uh, me, Evan, Vooch, I think we all had like 20-something. Um, but it was just one of those games where it was a good test going into the postseason. I feel like that's what gave us the groove going into the postseason. And even going into Toronto, you could feel the energy um, because I, honestly, it's like the, the city probably thought we weren't going to the to the playoffs until like the last five games of the season. Like we have a chance now. So just like it felt like the city just flipped the switch from very optimistic, like, all right, we're all in. We're ready to go. Like the whole city's coming out. People are going to bars all over downtown. Every every restaurant's filled just waiting for us to play. So um, we definitely fe- feel that energy. And I feel like that gives us the the like the extra boost we need to go on the road and and steal one from the team that will eventually go on to win the championship. So uh especially for me, that first game was 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 amazing. Um especially coming from Toronto, just knowing I got just a little bit of get back, a little bit, just a little bit. Uh it really it felt good for me. It was a full circle moment. So um man, but yeah, it just it's all about playing the the getting in your groove at the right time. And what do you remember from that in that uh, game three environment in Orlando? Obviously, you guys didn't end up winning that one, but what was that experience like for you? Man, uh, 
I mean, there, there's there's just no better feeling than that first playoff game at home. Um, whether you are you start the series on the road or you start at home, that first one is always special because it's kind of like you, you're letting the city set the bar for just what's to come for the rest of the series. And we went out there. It was a tough game, and we kept it close. Um, I, I remember a couple possessions in that game, like the half-court shot and – and trying and J.I. out there playing defense on everybody. But uh, it was definitely – it was an experience, man. It's definitely one of my favorite games playing in Orlando. Um, you know, just one of those things you just can't forget. What is the, 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 the week like between final game of the regular season and the first game of the playoffs? Because mm. – that's that's something I wish I had. There was a that I knew that someone was following around our guys, or at least one guy with a camera and a mic this week. Just what what's going on in your head, and and what is that like to to go from okay, we're playing regular season games to all right now it's seven game series, strap in. It's it could go great, it might not. Like, what is your mentality like? Um, I mean, when did the uh, when did they clinch? How many games did they have into like? left when they clinched the very the, last the, the very, the very last, last. okay so it, they're going into the, like a situation like that like for teams that have clinched and they have a few more games to finish the season it, it's it's kind of like a different mentality you want to make sure that you're just not completely just resting your guys and you guys are just playing your secondary and bringing up Julie guys you want to make sure that your guys are still in like you know in rhythm and it's one thing to approach the offseason or the postseason like that than it is, all right, we need every single game or we're out. So I think just them knowing that they clinch, like it, it gives them more incent- – not incentives, but it, it pushes them to to play at a higher level and to not take any games off and not to relax for any second. Because that's the one thing I felt like was always – those trap doors is when, oh, okay, we made the playoffs and we're, we're a higher seed, either we're, we're five or four, or whatever. But it, it kind of is mind games because now you feel like, okay, yeah, now we just got to get ready, get rested up. Sometimes too much rest is is bad for you. So, I mean, they, they clinched with the last one. Hopefully they can, you know, keep that intensity going into the postseason. I mean, it's hard not to, but it, I, I would almost prefer them having to be more serious until the final whistle into, rather than having a couple games off the chill. So this first round matchup, the Magic are, you know, the five seed going against, you know, Cleveland, the four seed first game will be set this Saturday uh, in Cleveland. Terrence, what do you think, like, how do these teams match up and, um, what do you think the Magic have to do well to be able to, you know, uh, win this series? Yeah, especially with 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 young teams like Orlando, who this is the most of the guys' first playoff experience on the road. I mean, their their emotion is going to be high. They're going to want to go out there and and try to 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 hit them early. And no matter what happens, all I all you all they need to be worried about is just their defense. Um, we know that. Cleveland can score. Donovan Mitchell's a, a handful. He's hard to guard. And especially during the playoffs, he knows he's going to be highlighted even more. So he's going to try to take that to the next level. Um, you have – they play well on offense. And they, they've they been in the playoffs before. They've, they've had big battles and, and meaningful games. It's all about defending. Because we know that at some point, shots aren't going to fall. Runs are going to happen. It's all about how you can keep the other team from creating that space in the, in the lead just too early. I just, more than anything, I always, I remember just when I, my very first playoff game, my coach was always just, Dwayne Casey was always just like, no matter what happens, defense is going to keep us in the game. No matter what, we are going to have a chance as long as we keep the game close. Shots will begin to fall. We will start to bring out different schemes, different plays, mix things up but nothing can get in the way of what your defense has to do. So as long as they have that mindset, I think they'll be fine because we all know that they're one of the hardest teams to score on. They're the second best defensive team in the league. Like there's no way that they shouldn't go out there and be a problem on the defensive end. So that's, that's really the biggest thing. Everything else would take care of itself. Do you have a prediction for this series, Terrence? I do. I, I, I'm not, (laughs) this might be a little biased, but I, I honestly see, 
the magic finishing it in six. Oh. I just, I just, the defense alone, if, if the offense gets off to a good start in the first two games, um, yeah, I think, I think the magic can, can put them away. You heard it here, folks. Terrence Ross, magic in six can, uh, take that to the, to the bank. And, and Terrence, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to see you at some of these playoff games. No, for sure. I'm definitely going to be there. I'm actually um, going to be doing radio broadcasting, so I'm definitely going to be around. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, Terrence, man, thank you so much for the time, man. Thank you for everything that you've done, obviously, your your time in Orlando. And the fact that you're still around, to me, is is the the coolest thing. Like, seeing you at, at Magic Games just means so much because a lot of us have, have been saying for a long time, like Terrence Ross lifetime contract, and the fact <laughs> that you're still around, you know, yeah. it, it's sort of like that, Terrence. So we appreciate the time, man. Thank you guys, man. It's always been love. Enjoy coming on the show. And uh, man, let's hope the boys get it done. Terrence Ross, the Human Torch. Always a pleasure to talk with Terrence. Always speaks his mind. Love the prediction, Magic in Six. Uh, hopefully it plays out that way. But uh, again, always great to have Terrence on the show. Appreciate him taking the time, Luke. And dropping some news about the radio that he will be on the airwaves with our guy Jake Chapman. So super exciting uh, for Terrence. I'm I'm happy to hear he's got the magic in six. Maybe a little bit more uplifting than my Cavs in five take. But love that guy. He always makes time for fans, for us, who ultimately are just fans. And uh, just really cool that, that we've been able to keep that connection with him. That he is staying in Orlando and and living here and continuing to build his family here. All the love for for Terrence Ross. We went from jam hot into the human torch with Terrence Ross. Staying on the topic of things that are hot, it's going to be hot Saturday. Game mm -hmm. one, if you're coming out to the watch party at Wall Street, dress light, bring a hat, stay hydrated, You know, bring plenty of water, whatever you, you got to do. Uh, it's supposed to be like in the 90s by the by the time of tip off. So, um, and speaking about game one, that is Saturday. We do have the rest of the playoff schedule here. So, for anybody that hasn't seen that yet, just want to go through it. So, game one at Cleveland, Saturday, April 20th at 1 p.m. this coming Saturday. That'll be broadcast on Bally Sports and ESPN. Game two will be Monday, April 22nd at 7 p.m. The Magic are at Cleveland still. That'll be broadcast on Bally Sports Florida and NBA TV. Then the boys come home for game three, Thursday, April 25th. That's going to be on Bally and NBA TV at 7 p.m. Game four, TNT game. Watch out now. April 27th at 1 p.m. So two Saturdays in a row we get the 1 p.m. game, but we will be on Bally Sports Florida and TNT. And then game five through seven, again, the, the asterisk is if necessary. Game five at Cleveland would be Tuesday, April 30th. Game six would be in Orlando, Friday, May 3rd. Game seven would be at Cleveland, Sunday, May 5th. Times and networks have not been announced for those games five, six, and seven. You know, those if necessary games. So uh, looking forward to that, Luke. And really quickly, Kevin and I... We named the episode Everybody In. We didn't talk a ton about like the playoff slogan. I like Everybody In. Like it, it makes us feel like we're sort of getting that look inside the locker room, you know, when they're going into the huddle, like, yo, everybody in. Like I can just picture Jamal Mosley sort of saying that to the the team, the staff, the fan base, the community, the city. Like it really is everybody in. And I kind of like it. Initially. I didn't. But as any fan does, they convince themselves that things are good. Whether that's a trade, a signing, or a playoff slogan. I I was on the fence about it because I was like, I don't know. I'm a parent and I, I think about like just yelling at your kids to get in. Like, all right, everybody in. Everybody get in the picture. Everybody get in the car. That's yeah, all I, I thought that about. Um, exactly. It just rolls off the tongue. Everybody in. Now, when it really changed things for me was actually today. The Magic posted the graphic with everybody in that they've put now officially on Kia. They put a couple different pictures in a couple different spots, I, I believe, both on the Kia Center. And the uh, Advent Health Training Center. Yes. So they posted those, and I saw them, and I was like, it's beautiful. 
everybody in. I'm in. I'm in on everybody in. I'm here for it. I'm going to enjoy it. And we'll be hashtagging everything, basically. Everybody in. That's uh, that's what we're going to be doing. And everybody's going to be needing to get on the bandwagon. If our guys come out and, and shock the world and, and take the series from Cleveland. Speaking of bandwagon, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. I've been, you know, there's been some early rumblings of like, oh, we're getting bandwagon fans. Good. Yeah. That is what we want, right? <laughs> like we want, if this is somebody's like first experience of the Orlando Magic this season, this is the type of season that could make them a Magic fan for the rest of their lives, right? Like some of you listening, you became a fan in that 2009 run when the Magic went to the finals. And then, hey, you love the team so much, you stuck with them through the Dwight Mayer, through the Evan Fournier, Aaron Gordon, Nikola Vucevic teams. And look at us now. Now we're repping you know, or reaping the benefits of, of sticking with the team that long. So give people the opportunity to do the same thing. Just because mm-hmm. they weren't a fan a month ago, one year ago, 10 years ago, whatever the case may be, like we should welcome new Magic fans into the fold. You can't stand there and shake your fist at, at teams that have large followings and big markets and say, you know, talk trash about like, oh, I, I wish that the Magic, essentially what you're saying is like, I wish the Magic were like you guys. You get all this coverage and you have all these fans that come into our arena. It is my dream that we have... Orlando Magic fans making a team that is hosting a game feel like it's an away game because of all the fans in the arena. I welcome that. I, it, there's no reason not to. You can't just take the Magic all for yourselves. This, Yes, kudos to you. Pat on the back for finding this team before they were great. That's awesome. We all get to say that. But you should want just be a nice person. Let people jump on the bandwagon. We want that that makes everything more fun. Wall Street, we were expecting hundreds of hundreds, if not thousands, to come out to Wall Street and at all those watch parties. We if you told us, hey, we've got we've got like God, another thousand coming, but they're all bandwagons. Be like, I don't care. Bring them over. Everybody Let, in. Everybody in. Exactly. Exactly. Everybody in. So yes, don't be don't be a, a rude human being. Let these people if you see people on Twitter that are like trying to give the magic their flowers and stuff too, don't be like, nah, 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 you guys weren't with us. It's like it's different uh, if they've there already could be a little bit of that. <laughs> if people were talking a lot of smack before. No, if they yes, of course. But if they're just like innocent bystanders who want to give the magic flowers, say good things, and they have another team in their bio. Whatever it is, just just welcome it. We haven't had compliments in so freaking long. Take them, and if people want to join and be a uh, jump on the bandwagon, be a Magic fan, this is the point where that is totally okay. And we can't be mad about Warriors fans taking over the building, Heat Heat fans yeah. taking over the building, Celtics fans taking over the building, and then get mad that new people want to be fans of the team. Like that's that's how we get those idiots out of the building. Yeah. is by people wanting to root for the magic while they're there. So yeah. just wanted to, to bring that up. But that is going to wrap up this one. Uh, be on the lookout for that playoff preview pod with Bob Schmidt from Fear the Fro podcast talking about the Cleveland Cavaliers. And then uh, we'll have post-game lives and six-man shows after every single playoff game. So again, if you don't see an episode from us on like a Monday or a Thursday, like, whoa, what's going on? Just check the schedule. If there was a magic game the night before, like, You're not going to get an episode Monday because game two is Monday. So that episode is going to come out. What is that? Tuesday. You will get an episode Thursday because game three or actually, no, you're not going to get an episode Thursday (laughs) because game three is Thursday. It's not Wednesday. So just on Friday at that. Just just roll with us as as this is as this is happening. It's it's going to be a little bit wonky just because we're getting away from the normal schedule. and We're just doing these after every single magic game. So. I'm just ready for the playoffs to start, yeah. you know, heading into tomorrow. We're going to have Thursday, Friday, and then the playoffs are going to be here. Looking forward to being at Wall Street with a thousand, two thousand of our very best magic friends. It's going to be the best time ever. Again, dress light, bring a hat, wear sunscreen, drink water. We want everybody to have a good time, but we want everybody to, to be safe as well. And yeah, Luke, I think that's going to do it unless you have anything else.
I was just going to say, imagine being these losers fighting for their lives in a play-in right now. Am I right? <laughs> Philadelphia, <laughs> Miami. Oh, Three-point game with 246 to go. Yeah, Miami's up right now, so hopefully that, that swings the other way. You guys know how it ends, out, ends up, but I love watching these people, these players play so hard because they could be out of the playoffs by the end of the week. <laughs> what a bunch of losers. Couldn't be us. Look at that. Five Love seed it. Orlando Magic. Let's uh let's start off right on Saturday. And uh hopefully a lot of you guys will be joining us at Wall at Wall Street and all the surrounding areas. Love it. Awesome. All right, that is going to do it for this one for Luke Sylvia. This has been Jonathan Osborne. You all have been listening to the Six Man Show, and we will catch you guys next time. Everybody in. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Sixth Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sixth Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!